Pharma is a worthless and talented waste of space noble kid, whose good life came from his noble bloodline. One day, he gets struck by lightning and falls instantly into eternal rest. However, in an unpredictable twist of fate and an unexplainable loop of time, a genius man from the 20th century died in his sleep at the same time Pharma died. His soul gets transferred into the body of the noble brat, and his life will turn upside down because he still remembers his past life. Apparently, he has to live the life of a person he knows nothing about. He has no choice but to fit into the new world where he belongs as he gradually becomes the greatest pharmacist of all time. Sometime in the 20th century, there was a professor named Kanji Yakutani whose typing speed rivaled those who had the Guinness Book of World Records. He can type at a speed of 350 words per minute, and he has published several medicinal research that are too many to mention. However, he doesn't care about the title because he only cares about creating more medicines to cure different diseases. One day, his secretary enters his office to tell him that a pharmaceutical representative has arrived to take all the credit for his new research because he doesn't have time to present it worldwide. As expected, he doesn't care about the recognition, and tells his secretary to leave him alone. While working, he saw the childhood picture of him and his sister, and realized that he hadn't eaten anything for two days. The next day, he continues his 48-hour fasting, but his body can no longer keep up with the extreme hunger, so he decides to buy some snacks from Vendo Kun. While eating, he remembers his childhood memory of losing his little sister because the medicine they gave her did not work. Since then, he became the ugly disgusting gloomy person he is, and devoted himself to discovering more medicines, so no other kids like her sister would die at a very young age. However, anything too much is dangerous, especially for fragile human beings. So after creating his latest medicine, Yakutani falls asleep, and Sleep Kun takes the initiative to isekai him to the new world because there is no way Truck Kun can enter his office. Moments later, he wakes up in the body of a noble young boy with his waifu material pink-haired maid. It did not take too long for Yakutani to come to his senses, so he opened the windows and was extremely shocked to realize that he was in a completely different world. When he calms down, Charlotte informs him that he is Pharma de Medicis. Yakutani has studied enough, and his intelligence is more than enough to realize that he probably died due to overworking, and gets reincarnated in the body of a boy named Pharma. Soon after, Charlotte brings him warm water to clean his body. However, she gets flustered upon seeing the marks of Panic Theos, the god of medicine. That said, Charlotte falls on her knees, preparing to accept her blessing from his holy Excalibur. Sorry, I mean she worships him like he is the statue of Buddha. Moments later, Pharma asks Charlotte to inform him everything about his life. Charlotte took him to their family gallery, where he saw the portraits of his family members. She starts with his dad, Bruno de Medicis, who is a handsome middle-aged nobleman, followed by his mom Beatrice and his little sister Blanche. Lastly, he sees the portrait of his elder brother Pau who seems to have taken all the good looks in their genes, leaving Pharma with nothing but an ugly face. Apparently, Pal studies overseas to increase his body count. Sorry, I mean while discovering how medicine can trigger plot development among human beings. Never mind it's probably just some sort of a nobleman culture. Charlotte further reveals that he is a divine arts of water practitioner, who can use magic like water types Pokemon. Unfortunately, Pharma cannot remember anything about it, which worries Charlotte to a whole new level because if he can no longer use magic, he will no longer be recognized as a noble. Realizing that he is in great trouble, Pharma tries remembering the molecular composition of water under chemistry and magically manages to produce water. However, he has no idea how to control it, so he throws the water out of the window only to find out that he wets Charlotte with his liquid. Charlotte tells Pharma not to worry because she enjoys every bit of his liquid over her filthy body. Moments later, Pharma starts experimenting with his magic, and discovers that he can produce any elements or substance with one hand and make them vanish with the other. Later that day, Pharma joins his family to a dinner. Upon realizing how happy of a family they are, he decided to live his life as Pharma from that moment on. After eating, his father starts asking him questions as if he will join a science quiz B. The next day, he resumes his lessons with Eleanor, his plot-filled divine arts tutor. Eleanor immediately notices the massive change in Pharma's personality, so he tells him that his memories get fuzzy after the incident. Eleanor starts explaining to him some godly stuff, and they proceed to do some water magic using her elongated stick. When it is Pharma's turn to do magic, he creates a strong water tornado, which opens Eleanor's plot armor. 
Eleanor wonders how he manages to do such a thing, so he tests his power with her divinometer. To her surprise, Pharma manages to break the limits. Afterward, Eleanor sees the glowing mark on his shoulder and she tells him to keep everything a secret, especially to his father. Moments later, the two went back to the mansion. Here, Pharma discovers that he can see someone's medical issue in blue light, and when he identifies it right, the blue light turns white. Eleanor realizes that he possesses Panikthios's divine eye. Unable to process everything with her mind, Eleanor starts freaking out. Moreover, after seeing that Pharma has no shadow, Eleanor starts crying and runs like a mad woman toward the bushes. On the other hand, Pharma knows that a big trouble is about to come his way. The next day, Pharma learns from Bruno that Eleanor has a high fever and she wants to quit teaching him. That said, his father asks Pharma if he has something to do with it, which Pharma denies immediately. Hearing that, his father orders him to deliver a letter and medicine to her. However, before giving it to her, Pharma prepares the right medicine for high fever, because his father's medicine is nothing but an energy drink. When Pharma arrives Eleanor is wearing a metal warrior suit with a purple aura coming out of her body. Eleanor begs him to spare her life. However, Pharma clarifies to her that he only comes to see her, because it was his father's order, and he gave her the medicines and the instructions on how to use them. When she calms down, Pharma tells her that he wants to continue studying with her, like everything is normal. Moments later, Eleanor goes back to her senses, and uses the medicine upon realizing that Panic Theos is a benevolent god with no record of harming humans. Eleanor meets with Pharma the next day, but she still wears the armor. Nonetheless, Eleanor tells him that she will continue working as his tutor. Eleanor further explains that if he cannot control his power, he might bring destruction to the Empire, so she has to take responsibility for him. After that, she thanks Pharma for the medicine, and the two begin their training. With his tutor's help, he successfully created huge waves, heavy rain, and a gigantic iceberg. The next day, Pharma uses his Panic Theos's divine eye to diagnose the medical conditions of their servants. That said, he started gathering the materials and tools needed to create medicines. First, he produced his white sticky liquid and put it inside a beaker. Then, with the help of his magic he proceeds to prepare the rest of the needed materials to complete the ointment. Soon after, Pharma gave the ointment to Charlotte and distributed the other medicines to the rest of their servants, making them cry. Charlotte explains to him that medicine is not something that commoners like them can afford. Hearing all that, Farmer realizes that medication in their time is only given to people with higher social status, which makes him feel sad. Later that afternoon, Pharma is still thinking of the sad reality of medicine availability in their time. That said, he tells Charlotte that he will do his best to make medicine available to all regardless of social status, making her servant feel genuinely happy. The next morning, Pharma joins his family for breakfast, but he immediately notices that Blanche is not around. Suddenly, his father informs him that his little sister has been infected by chickenpox and he cannot see her for three weeks. When his father left, Pharma used his magic to create the medicine for chickenpox. Then, he sneaks into Blanche's room. Blanche expresses to her brother how disgusted she is with herself with the bumps all over her body. She even tells him that their father will be upset if he knows about it. That said, Pharma tells her to keep it a secret. Meanwhile, when Pharma tells her to take the medicine that he prepared to cure her disease, Blanche starts expressing his refusal to take it, because she claims that it is very bitter. Pharma puts the medicine inside a macaroon, so Blanche will not taste its bitterness. When Blanche asks his brother if it's okay to do it, Pharma confirms it. However, he warns her that there are some medicines that cannot be taken using the same process, so she should always ask him first. When Blanche tells him that the medicine for her disease is not yet discovered, Pharma lies, and tells her that he saw it in a book. After that, Pharma stops his sister from scratching the chicken pox, and he ends up talking about the virus. Moments later, Blanche tells Pharma that she likes how he changed into a sweet loving brother. Her words remind Pharma about his younger sister in his previous life, making him cry. After a week, Blanche is completely healed, and Bruno is surprised by how fast she has recovered. Before long, Pharma decided to create Li Yuanhok's copycat of a simple microscope. Suddenly, one of their servants interrupts and tells him that Bruno wants to meet him. Then, it is revealed they are summoned to check the health condition of the Empress. When Pharma asks his father why the Empress summoned them, he notices that his father has a severe cough. That said, Pharma tries to check his father's condition with his magical eye. However, his father suddenly talks to him before he can even do it. Upon arrival, they are welcomed by the head court physician named Claude. Apparently, the illness of Empress Elizabeth II is already in its worst state. Bruno did not waste any time, 
and he entered the room where the finest doctors of his generation gathered around to cure the disease of the Empress. Bruno approaches the bed of the sick Empress, and that's the first time Pharma sees the face of their Empress. Immediately, Bruno orders Pharma to bring him the materials he needs. Bruno gets a small amount of the Empress's tomato juice for testing. After figuring out the disease using horoscopes, they have concluded that the Empress will soon be Isekai by disease Kuhn. Then, Bruno calls Pharma to assist him in creating a treatment, which is basically just an anesthesia to alleviate the pain and suffering of the Empress. Pharma heard Claude summoning a priest, and he realized that they were planning to do a ritual for euthanasia. That said, Pharma uses his magical eye to diagnose the problem beyond the Empress's plot armor. Pharma figures out that she has tuberculosis, or what they refer to as the White Death. He realizes that he is in a very difficult situation to cure the Empress. That said, with just one wrong move disease Kuhn will emerge victorious. While contemplating, an annoyingly loud cry baby, Prince Louis appears thinking that his crying will help her mother, but he only makes things even more hopeless. Seeing all that, Pharma gathers up his courage, and asks the Empress for her permission to heal her. Bruno and Claude are up against the idea, but the Empress allows him to do so. Pharma did not waste any time and locked himself up to create the medicine, but his father stopped him from proceeding. Bruno, being the smartest person in the palace, decided to intervene instead of letting him complete the medicine quickly. He tells him that the medicine doesn't exist, but Pharma insists it does, and tells his father that he should also take it himself. Bruno then decides to fight him using his magic, but Pharma simply overpowers him. After seeing the notebook of Pharma and the mark of panic Theos, Bruno starts to understand things gradually. That said, he allowed him to continue creating the medicine. As he watches him do the medicine, Bruno wonders if he is really his son, and Pharma tells him that he considers himself to be his son. Soon after Pharma enters the room of the Empress wearing a face mask and bringing the medicine making the nobles feel suspicious of him. Firstly he tried explaining the disease to the Empress by showing the sputum sample to the Empress using Li Yuanhok's simple microscope. The Empress is dumbfounded to see creatures from it. Then the Empress orders Claude to see it himself. Claude is astonished to see it even referring to the bacteria as bugs. The noble's curiosity is triggered so they demand to see it themselves. Pharma then explains to the Empress that her body is being infected by bacteria lecturing her on some stuff in microbiology which is something that she doesn't understand at all. Not long after Pharma proceeds to explain how the Empress should take the medicine, and he reveals that she has to take it for six months. Pharma then declares to everyone that he is putting his life at stake to ensure the Empress is safe, and effective treatment making Bruno Loki proud of him. That said Pharma drinks his own medicine first to show everyone that he means no harm to the Empress. Seeing his great resolve the Empress decided to drink it too. After that, Pharma tells all the nobles that if his medicine works well they should never fear the White Death anymore. Soon after, the nobles crowded Pharma to ask him about his Li Wenhok simple microscope. When they start claiming that it is an amazing divine art, Pharma reveals to them that it's just a device that anyone can create. After that, the Empress looks at Bruno and smiles at him because he has raised a great child. While returning home, Bruno reminisces all of his memories with Pharma, realizing that he has not become a good father to him. When they arrived, he gave the same medicine to his father and told him that he could take it if he wanted. Bruno then tells him that if it's Panic Theos's will, then he should follow it. Pharma revealed to his father that while he has the knowledge to do various medicines, his acumen is still shallow and unrefined. Thus, he wants to continue learning from the experiences of his father, making Bruno feel genuinely happy. Then, they go back to their mansion, where their family waits for them. For three months, Pharma and Bruno began to exchange knowledge and information about many diseases. Then, he learned from his father that a contingent from the College of Medicine was demanding to know the recipe for white death medicine. Pharma told his father that medicine could be done without the use of divine arts, and he would make it available to the public very soon which surprised him greatly. He even tells him that things as important as that should be known to everyone. Bruno, on the other hand, warns Pharma that with his abilities and beliefs, some people will try to eliminate him. He even revealed to him that there is a talk in the palace that someone intentionally brought White Death to harm the Empress. However, Pharma disagreed with the idea, since the probability of developing White Death from being exposed to an infected person is just 10%. Bruno wonders how he knows about that information, but Pharma avoids the question by telling his father that he has an appointment with the Empress. When Pharma arrives at the palace, Noah tells him that the Empress is planning to give him a reward. Then, when he sees that Pharma is not that interested, he gets mad at him. 
However, he did not stop interrogating Pharma about the future goal that he wants to achieve. That said, Pharma revealed to him that he wanted to open a pharmacy that would cater to both rich and poor, noble and commoner. Soon after, Pharma talks to the Empress about how the medicine helps her recover. The Empress then starts telling him her worries about being the Empress of the palace again. Luckily, Pharma's words help her gain her confidence. When Pharma bids her goodbye with his parting words, the Empress suddenly remembers the love of her life. Immediately, her floodgate opens, allowing her to reach climax again after many years of having a dry season. Several months later, the Empress returned to the throne, and she invited Bruno and Pharma to attend the special royal gathering. Moments later, Pharma is shocked to be in the presence of the noblest people in the palace. His father was granted several rewards from the Empress, while he was granted a royal pharmacist badge. He is even rewarded by the Empress to have his own pharmacy in the royal capital. The very next day, several professional craftsmen arrive to help him construct his pharmacy. Soon after, Eleanor arrives to help him decide immediately, and Pharma draws the design that he wants for his pharmacy. During the construction, the project head asked him what name he wanted to give the building. That said, Pharma ended up telling the name, Parallel World Pharmacy, and just like that the head asked the sign maker to craft it for the pharmacy. The next day, while Eleanor and Pharma are having their conversation, Veron arrives. He introduces himself as the head of the Sane Flu Pharmaceutist Guild, and Pharma does the same thing. Realizing that his competitor is just a child, he starts intimidating him by insulting the credibility of his pharmacy. As they continue their conversation, Farmer reveals to Veron that he plans to offer the best medicines at the cheapest prices. Hearing that, Veron starts lashing out in anger about Farmer's concept of cheap prices. Luckily, Eleanor is there to silence Veron and with her deadly glare Veron leaves immediately. Moments later, the preparations inside the pharmacy are already done. That said, Pharma is left with another problem, which is finding the right people to help him run the business. Hearing that, Charlotte volunteers herself to be one of his employees. Seeing her willingness, Pharma allows her to be part of it, and Charlotte celebrates like he won the lottery. As soon as Pharma returns home, he notices their servants gathering around to bid goodbye to Cedric, who just resigned from his job due to his feet condition. After knowing that Cedric wants to continue working if his knees get better, Pharma decides to heal and hire him. That said, Pharma decides to ask his father's permission to hire Cedric for his pharmacy, which Bruno permits. On the other hand his father has another surprise for him. Bruno asks Simon to bring out the chest of gold coins to Pharma, which he can use as capital to run his own business. Pharma is very happy with this, and he expresses his gratitude to his father. On the day of the grand opening, Pharma shares the mission and vision of his pharmacy with the public. Little did he know, while he was delivering his opening speech, his family was hiding in a carriage secretly watching him. And just like that, he officially opened the Parallel World Pharmacy. One month had passed and things were not happening as Pharma expected them to be. Eleanor explains that he should expect it to happen, because commoners are used to buying medicines from long-standing shops. On the other hand, the nobles simply call for a physician whenever they need one. While Pharma, Eleanor and Cedric discuss the strategy that they can do to run the pharmacy effectively, Charlotte arrives with the survey results from 100 people in the capital. Her action speaks volumes, proving to all of them that despite her poor status, her mind is as brilliant as the nobles. And just like that, Charlotte reveals to them the impressions of the commoners. The results show that people are too scared of the imperial seal displayed outside the pharmacy. People are too weary of how to deal with nobles. People are intimidated by the guards. People don't trust a child proprietor. And lastly, people think prices are too high. After that, they all brainstorm and try to plan solutions to the problems. Moments later, a geezer arrives to buy a candy that contains vitamin C. Apparently, he is the first regular customer of their pharmacy, but behind his old ugly disgusting image, he seems to be hiding something deep inside. Not long after, two masked individuals arrived at the Parallel World Pharmacy. Pharma is not stupid enough not to notice that they are his parents in disguise. And just like that, Pharma happily welcomes them to his shop, and he even gives them a detailed tour of his pharmacy. When Bruno asks him about the organic traffic in his pharmacy, Pharma gets very uncomfortable because he is not doing well in that aspect. After learning about his current situation, Beatrice suggests a strategy that she learned from TikTok and Instagram which is making some impression on the public by selling cheap cosmetics. Bruno does not completely agree with Beatrice's suggestion, so he warns Pharma about the downsides of using cosmetics. Out of nowhere, Pharma's parents suddenly flirt with each other. 
Their petty talk was interrupted when a blonde butler started calling for an emergency. When Pharma goes to the carriage, they are shocked to see that the medical practitioner is just a child. However, they all keep their mouths shut after seeing his royal badge. Soon after, Pharma figures out that the sudden collapse of the noble lady named Chloe is due to her extreme tomato juice extraction. It turns out that she has been absorbed too much in the K-pop beauty standards that she wants to look pale, white, and younger, even if she has to undergo unsafe procedures. When Pharma realizes that her desire will lead to her demise, he decides to create healthy cosmetics for her. Pharma concocted the perfect cosmetics, and he tried them on himself, making him look like an underage geisha. He then explains why his cosmetics are better than the toxic containing cosmetics in the current market. One week passed and Chloe returned to the Parallel World Pharmacy to get his cosmetics. Pharma then starts lecturing about ultraviolet rays from the sun kind of stuff that no one really cares about. Nonetheless, Chloe became very happy that she didn't have to have her tomato juice extracted again. The next day, the pharmacy officially starts selling cosmetics, along with the greatest crypto rug pull scam strategy that they learned from Andrew Tate. Apparently, this makes all women go crazy because they all desire to experience the same white sticky liquid of pharma. One day, Chloe returns to the pharmacy along with her friends, but gets upset because the cosmetics are already sold out. She then learns from Pharma that he has a problem with the production since they have to cater to several customers. Realizing that situation, Chloe offers to branch out his cosmetic business under his care to which Pharma eventually agrees. When Pharma visited the cosmetics store, he saw the hottest MILFs in town, who happened to be Chloe's manpower in running the business. Meanwhile, after Charlotte conducted her most recent survey, they found out that all the negative impressions about Parallel World Pharmacy and its business owner had completely changed. That said, Pharma is congratulated by all of his employees. The next day, Pharma meets the Empress to present to him his beauty products. However, the news has already reached the Empress beforehand, and she activates her female reasoning and gets pissed with him for not letting her be the first one to have it. Pharma apologizes after making the Empress feel upset about his action. So to compensate for his shortcomings, Pharma brought her his newest beauty product, the medicinal lip gloss. That said, the Empress uses it and she is surprised at how good her lips look afterward. On a serious note, Pharma thanks the Empress for releasing an order to eradicate all the toxic containing cosmetics in the market. However, the Empress tells him that for doing such action many businesses have filed bankruptcy. Hearing that, Pharma tells her that he will share the ingredients of his product, so the business owners can continue doing their cosmetic business. However, the concern doesn't end there as the Empress commands him to raise the prices of his products. Upon hearing it, Pharma gets completely shocked. However, when he hears the explanation from the Empress, he realizes how much damage he is giving the wealthy people and the nobles just because he wants to favor the poor. That said, Pharma happily agreed with the advice of the Empress. Several days later, Pharma and his family went to the seaside of their country. Bruno has to do his personal visit to check if the management of the Empire's territory is under good control. When they are disclosing some important details of the Empire's economic stuff, Bruno tells Pharma to get a life and find other things to do. That said, Pharma goes to the seaside to meet Blanche and Charlotte, who are creating a sand castle. Suddenly, Blanche asked his brother's permission to go to the seawater and have a taste of its salty water because she had enough of his brother's salty body liquid. Sorry, I mean, the seawater is salty. Pharma doesn't like the idea, but Blanche and Charlotte activate their cute anime charm to get his approval. That said, Pharma is left with no choice but to allow them, and he just decides to enjoy the sea breeze with Eleanor who's very much ready to share the taste of her peach mango pie. She tried using her MILF body, which made Pharma reach climax three times. His attention was shifted to Blanche, and he remembered his baby sister in his past life. It turns out that they made a promise to enjoy the sea together, but Disease Coon ended the newest Alabama movie by taking away his baby sister's life. Pharma is confident that he will not experience the same thing again. But C. Kuhn wants to steal the show by taking away his current baby sister and giving him a deja vu experience. Charlotte wants to save her but she knows how useless and pathetic she is, so she decides to spam the shout button instead. Pharma quickly dives into the sea to save his sister, but C. Kuhn is prepared to give him a hard time. Fortunately, his godly power is activated, and he created a manhole in the middle of the sea. Seeing this, Eleanor is completely shocked because she witnesses something that humans cannot do. When they return to the shore, Blanche spams the cry button, 
and Eleanor continues her explanation with some magical attribute stuff that no one cares about. Pharma noticed the scared Charlotte and felt bad about it. On the other hand, Eleanor commends him for his great power and for saving Blanche. Moments later, Pharma is still worried about what happened. Charlotte notices it and she tries talking to him. Then, Pharma learned that Charlotte was not really scared of him, because in reality, she felt extremely bad for putting Blanche's life in grave danger. After that, Charlotte kneels down and tells Pharma that to pay for her mistake, she will allow him to use her any way he likes. However, Pharma tells her that he cannot handle her salty skirt that smells like anime convention. Emotional damage! Elsewhere, the holy priests are gossiping about the kid with no shadow who created a manhole in the sea. Apparently, some people have witnessed it, and they reported it to them. That said, the holy priest declares to destroy Pharma at all costs, believing that he is a threat to humanity. The next day, the pharmacy operates again, and is expected the customer's queue is longer than your last relationship. Pharma notices that the number of his customers is increasing exponentially compared to the subscribers of this channel. So to prove Pharma wrong, don't forget to subscribe. On the other hand, Pharma notices some suspicious guys wearing hooded robes inside his pharmacy, and he asks them what they want. They, however, gave a deadly glare on Pharma, and immediately left after that. When they took their coffee break, Pharma told them about his encounter with the hooded robe guys, which left them all wondering what exactly they needed from Pharma. Moreover, Eleanor told them that their outfit looked similar to ones from the Holy Kingdom. The next morning, an unknown person sent a riderless horse carriage to hit the Parallel World Pharmacy. The evil plan succeeds, and the first floor of Pharma's pharmacy is destroyed. When the news reaches Bruno, he gets extremely mad. Meanwhile, Pharma seems sad and disappointed with the turn of events. Daddy Dearest asks Pharma if he has any suspects in his mind. But Pharma doesn't want to jump to conclusions. That said, Bruno reminded his son always to be vigilant, as the enemies were willing to resort to anything just to take him down. When Pharma arrives at his destroyed pharmacy, he sees that Cedric is starting to fix the matter. He then shows to Pharma how much damage the pharmacy had taken from the attackers. Cedric also uses his purification spell called Air Freshener to remove the unpleasant smell from the animal poop brought by the carriage. Fortunately, Pharma's laboratory is left untouched. When they finished talking about the medicine distribution that was scheduled that day, the old geezer arrived with his pack of middle-aged daddies to help with the construction of the destroyed pharmacy. Pharma is delighted with the amount of people who came to help him restore his pharmacy. That said, Pharma can't say anything but express his gratitude toward them. All of a sudden, a distressed lady arrives and tells Pharma that she needs his help because his father has lost consciousness. The crowd allows him to do what he needs to do, and Pharma immediately leaves with the lady, not to waste any more time. While they are riding the horse, the lady tells him that she wants to ride something else, but Pharma tells her that they only have one horse. Not long after, Pharma reached the hill that the girl told him about. Shockingly, the girl suddenly disappears, and there is no unconscious old man in the area. In no time, Pharma finds himself surrounded by suspicious people wearing white robes. Pharma remembers what Eleanor told him about the people wearing white robes. He learned that they were from the temple or holy kingdom. They are prominent individuals in society, because they have the role of ascertaining newborn children to their guardian deities, and making them able to use divine arts. Not only that, they are also the ones choosing who will be the ruler of a country. This only means that the authority of the temple is higher than that of the state. Moreover, Eleanor tells him that if they want to go against the Empress, they can simply do it with no trouble. After that, Eleanor informs him about the Office of Inquisition from the Temple. It is an organization that eliminates evil spirits and heretics using divine arts against injustice. However, Eleanor tells him not to worry so much about it. Back to the present time, Pharma is in the presence of Solomon the Grand Temple Inquisitor and his minions. Solomon then asks him directly if he is the child with no shadow as if he cannot see it with his naked eyes. Suddenly, this bunch of grown-ups start intimidating and ganging up a child forcing him to admit that he is an evil spirit. After that, they ask Pharma to surrender by moving backward, and just as expected, it was a trap. On the other hand, Pharma easily breaks the restraining spell, which shocks them all. Salomon's minions decide to steal the show, and they blast him with fire and ice, however, Pharma simply nullifies their attacks. Upon witnessing that he possesses multiple elemental attributes, Salomon orders his minions to end his very existence. That said, several elemental attacks are cast towards Pharma. To their surprise, Pharma encased himself with thick ice crystals. Then, Pharma unleashes a strong force from his inner power, and before the enemies can cast a barrier, Pharma blasts it to all of them. 
Salomon's horse went wild, and he fell to the ground. Then, they saw Farmer ready to cast a powerful spell against them for the second time if they wouldn't stop attacking him. Salomon, on the other hand, saw the mark of Panic the O's on Pharma's shoulders. At that moment, he realizes that Pharma is the reincarnation of Panic the O's. After that, they all kneel down before him and ask for their punishment. Salomon is ready to Isekai himself to a new world, but Pharma stops him from doing so. Pharma then uses his magical eye and finds out that he gets a severe fracture, which might cost him his life. Although he doubts himself if he can do the operation or not, he cannot let him die, so he decides to continue anyway. Not long after, Pharma comes out and tells them that Salomon's condition is already stable. Several months later, Salomon, who has become the newest bishop, visits the Parallel World Pharmacy. He even brought a box of expensive sweets that made the two girls extremely excited. He then apologizes for the trouble he gave him in the past. It is also revealed that Salomon did his best to rank up in the Holy Kingdom to be able to serve Pharma even better. After that, he reveals that he had taken care of all the reports about a child with no shadow. Moreover, he brought Pharma more presents from the Holy Kingdom. Moments later, Salomon gave Pharma one of the holy treasures of the temple, which is a magical wand called Fanek Rabos. Upon picking it up, the wand glows magnificently, which means it acknowledges its owner. Moreover, no one else can wield it, for it can only be held by its true master. Soon after, Pharma tried floating by riding it, and just like that, he successfully did. That said, Pharma expresses his gratitude towards Salomon. Before Salomon leaves, he gives Pharma a talisman that can suppress his divine power, which means he can have a shadow again. Pharma is much overjoyed after receiving the talisman than when he received the wand. He then explains to Salomon that he's been wanting to walk under the sun like normal people. However, he is afraid that they might fear him because they cannot understand the reason why he doesn't have a shadow. Moments later, Blanche wants to buy some huge melons because he wants to be like Eleanor. However, Charlotte tells her that it will take time before her plot will grow as big as melons. That said, she asks his brother to buy him any fruit. Along the way, Pharma passes through a local pharmacy, and they are talking about the Parallel World Pharmacy. Pharma then learns that the local pharmacies are restricted by the guild. When they return to the pharmacy, Pharma expressed his desire to establish a separate guild. Pharma explains that if he successfully establishes a new guild he can have local pharmacies sell his medicines. Eleanor is a bit worried that no local pharmacies might join a newly established guild. However, Pharma is dedicated to making it happen, so he asks Cedric to prepare all the needed documents for it. Pharma learns from his past mistakes, and he doesn't want to overwork himself again. That said, Eleanor tells him that he sounds like a 40-year-old man. Elsewhere, Pierre, the local pharmacist, is getting frustrated because her daughter is not healing with the use of his self-made medicine. Sometime earlier, the only existing guild in the capital is having a general meeting, and Veron talks about how Parallel World Pharmacy ruins their business. They talk about how cheap and effective pharma's medicines are, but Veron claims that they have hidden agendas behind them. Veron cannot stand the idea that the Parallel World Pharmacy is supported by the Archduke and the Empress. It is then revealed that Veron is the person behind the carriage incident. Veron then forbids all guild members from having contact with Parallel World Pharmacy. He even threatens them that whoever goes against his orders will be removed from the guild and he will also remove their business permits. Hearing all those things, they cannot do anything but reluctantly agree to everything he says. Back at the present time, Pierre brings his daughter to the nearest clinic, but unfortunately it is closed. Pharma saw him and he asked him if his daughter suddenly fell ill. Pierre is aware that Veron's eyes are everywhere so he is hesitant to talk to Pharma. However, Pierre no longer cares about Veron's anger at that moment, because all he wants is to have her daughter healed from her illness. That said, he agreed to get some help from Pharma himself, so Charlotte immediately returned to the pharmacy to prepare the clinic. Along the way, Pierre saw the long queue of people outside the Parallel World Pharmacy. Then, he followed Pharma who passed through the back gate. This, however, made Pierre feel sad, because he thought that people of poor and low social standing were treated that way. Upon entering, Pierre is dumbfounded by what he saw. He has never seen a clinic that is as advanced as Pharma's. Soon after, Pharma asks him to lay her daughter on the bed and wear a mask. At that moment, Pierre realizes that he's wrong about him having some prejudice with poor people. It turns out that Pharma only used the back door to avoid spreading the illness of her daughter. Moments later, Pharma starts his diagnosis interview, and he proceeds with the standard checkup protocols. He even asks for Mary's weight to know the right dosage that he will prescribe her. Lastly, Pharma uses his magical eye to confirm his diagnosis, and just like that, Pharma successfully diagnoses that his daughter has a severe cold. 
Pierre could not believe that it was just a severe cold, so Pharma explained that it was due to a virus called influenza. Once again, Pharma forgets that he is no longer in his previous world, and he keeps on talking about some virus stuff that no one understands. However, when he saw that the two got scared of him he tried to play it cool, and explained it using simple words. Then, he administered the right medicine to Pierre's daughter. When night arrives, Pierre returns home along with her daughter. Pierre can't help but feel insecure at how big the difference is between Pharma's skills and his. Seeing him feeling down, his wife tries her best to comfort him, but the two of them end up crying. The next day, another meeting at the guild was held. Veron lashes out his anger about the way the nobles and aristocrats treat commoners as livestock for tax revenues. On the other hand, Pierre chooses to stand for the truth, which triggers the anger of Veron. Later that day, Pierre is seen crying outside his pharmacy. Pharma then noticed the destroyed pharmacy and felt extremely bad about it. Not long after, he saw the devastated Pierre, so he approached him to ask him what exactly happened to him. Pharma immediately realizes that Pierre is a pharmacist like him. With so much sadness, Pierre explains to him that after he told the guild the truth about Pharma's pharmacy, they took all of his merchandise and even his business permit. Hearing that, Pharma felt extremely sorry for him. He even revealed that with his business being banned at the guild, he can no longer do any business. Pierre even added that the only choice for him is to migrate to another country and start from scratch, because he cannot give up being a pharmacist. Pharma then asks him if he can do business again, if he will join another guild. Pierre confirms it, and Pharma revealed that he had just recently received an order from the Empress allowing him to build and establish his own guild. And just like that, Pharma offers another chance for Pierre to do what he loves, making him cry like a baby. Later on, his most awaited day arrives and he cannot believe his eyes after seeing a huge crowd waiting for the reopening of his shop. With tears of joy, Pierre welcomes them to his shop. A long time ago, a long-haired man was punished by the temple priests. Then, a young Bruno is seen talking to a weird man named Camus, who has conducted gruesome experiments because he has a weird obsession with death. Suddenly, Bruno wakes up from that bad dream and remembers his former colleague. The next morning, the Demetis' family shared a breakfast, and Pharma noticed that his father seemed to not have enough sleep. Suddenly, their family butler arrived to give Bruno a letter from Pal, his eldest son. According to his letter, his home visit might be delayed. Then, Beatrice, Blanche, and Charlotte deliver some petty talks that are not really important just like how useless their faces are. Soon after, Bruno tells Pharma to come to his office afterward. Bruno then informs him that the month-long large-scale wholesale event in the country will happen soon. He tells him that during these times merchants from all over the world will gather at the Imperial City. After that, he tells Pharma that they should be cautious about it, because according to the letter from Pal a strange epidemic happened on Panta Island, and roughly 1,000 colonists had been wiped out. As they continue their conversation, Bruno informs him that the top researchers in the medical field who study the disease have died as well, which means the disease is contagious. Luckily the epidemic has ended, but the ships from the infected island will arrive at the upcoming event in the royal capital. Pharma asks his father if there are still existing samples of the infected bodies, but Bruno tells him that everything is incinerated. According to Pal's letter, the progress of the disease is clearly not normal because the infected ones have shown similar symptoms, and they eventually fell into coma. Based on the indicated symptoms, Pharma has an idea of what exactly the disease is. That said, he orders his father to ask Pal to send him the sketch of what they have seen under the microscope. Meanwhile, the royal court discusses how the empire prospers even more with the help of Pharma. The Empress plans to reward Pharma for his efforts, however he is too young to receive the rewards that she wants to give him. As they continue to their second agenda, it is revealed in the Empress's thoughts that she believes that Pharma is possessed by a supreme being. Later on, Eleanor finds Pharma looking extremely worried, which she finds very odd. It turns out that he has been deeply worried about the pandemic that might fall in their country. Suddenly, Charlotte enters the lab, and she gives Pharma a message from Powell. Apparently, it is the sketch that he requested earlier. Upon confirming, Pharma felt extreme fear down his spine, because unfortunately, his intuition was right. The contagious disease is no other than the worst and deadliest disease of all time, the Black Death, which is caused by the microorganism known as Yersinia pestis. Pharma is afraid of what is about to happen, because he only learned about the disease from history books, and he has not enough knowledge on how to handle it properly. Realizing the extreme tragedy that might fall the Empire, Pharma did not waste any time, and he started his preventive measures. Pharma then informs his father about it, and he happens to be thinking of the same thing. 
Farmer recalls his knowledge about the Black Death or the plague in his previous life, and he knows to himself that it is indeed humanity's greatest nightmare. Soon after, Pharma informs his father that he has already ordered to set up a quarantine facility at the port, and they even sent Eleanor's student to do the inspection method. Bruno then expresses his worry about the fate that the Empire might have in the near future. However, Pharma informs him not to worry, because he has developed a new medicine which shocks Bruno greatly. Pharma explains to him about the medicine called Levofloxacin, which is a great antibiotic against the bacteria that causes the Black Death. He also informs his father that he has already distributed the medicine all around the royal capital. Hearing all that, Bruno felt extreme relief. Soon after, Bruno and Pharma inform the Empress about it, and she immediately issues her orders regarding it. Moments later, Pharma gave Pierre a model copy of a compound microscope, which left him in great awe. After some explanation, Pharma checks the medicines that he asked him to prepare, and he leaves hoping that they will successfully prevent the Black Death. Meanwhile, the Empress asks for an update on their preparations for the upcoming event. They even talk about the quarantine and inspection method that runs smoothly. Then, they already have informed Salomon and his minions about the needed purification. Upon seeing that Pharma is still worried, Eleanor tells him that he has saved many people, and he has to be confident in facing another unknown circumstance. She even assures her that he is not alone, because he has people who believe in him. And just like that, they went straight to the port. Elsewhere, the true menace has started executing his evil plans. The menace walks in empty streets, and he has revealed himself to have the appearance of a rotting corpse. Apparently, he is a person who has been possessed by the evil spirits, and he is ready to continue his evil plans. As soon as they arrive at the port, Eleanor and Pharma look at the sea and they begin to realize the number of ships that they have to inspect. That said, Pharma did not waste any time and he started the inspection method, along with Eleanor. At the port, they are welcomed by their two comrades, and they give Pharma all the reports that they have gathered since the inspection started. Then, Pharma thanks the two for their efforts, and he immediately asks Eleanor to start doing their job too. As the inspection method continues, some of the sailor merchants are too impatient to undergo the lengthy process. Despite this, Pharma and Eleanor continue doing their tasks. After the inspection, Pharma gave the head physician of the ship a prescription for vitamin C to avoid scurvy. When they move to the next ship, the sailor merchant lashes out his anger at them. Soon after, the two sailor merchants start a commotion about who will undergo inspection first. That said, Eleanor gets pissed off by their behavior and decides to use her divine arts. However, before she could even use it, a cannon was launched at the sea near the ships. It turns out that they are the navy team from the Empire, and what shocks Pharma is that their captain is no other than their regular customer. Jean, the old geezer. Jean warns them that he will sink their ship if they are not willing to cooperate and follow the order from the Empire. Then, the tension subsided and Pharma continued their tasks. Soon after, they meet with the old geezer to thank him for his intervention. While they are expressing their worries and fear about the disease, Adam arrives to inform Pharma about the incident in the nearby fishing village. Apparently, there are some ships that don't want to undergo the inspection process, and they use the said village as a secret gateway. Moreover, there are people in the area who are experiencing symptoms of the feared disease. That said, Pharma immediately decided to check the village to see what was happening. Before leaving, Pharma boosts Eleanor's confidence, because she has to continue the inspection even if he is not around. Pharma uses his wand to fly to the infected fishing village quickly. Along the way the wand acts on its own accord, and quickly brings Pharma to his destination. Upon arrival, Pharma saw that the villagers were exiting the village. With a full understanding of contagious diseases, Pharma stops them from exiting the village. However, the villagers don't want to follow his orders. Their fear has overcome their way of thinking, and they start suspecting Pharma as an evil spirit. That said, they prepared to hurt him with various stuff, but Pharma had enough of their brainless act and he used his power to enclose the whole village with a thick layer of ice. The villagers are left dumbfounded after witnessing his power. When they shut their ugly disgusting mouths, Pharma explains to them that he comes to save them. He then shows his royal badge, and he successfully manages to calm them down. Soon after, Pharma talks to the leaders of the village to show his plan. Apparently, he wants to segregate the people of the village based on the severity of the cases. He further explains that the precaution will be used for him to know the ones who need to be treated first, and those who don't need treatment at all. Elsewhere, the Royal Navy saw an approaching ship. One of his crew members tells him that the ship is not responding to their signals. Then, he suspected that it could be the renegade ship that they had been looking for, which the old geezer confirmed. 
He then reads the flag signals of the ship that state they are experiencing an emergency and they need medical help. Jean then orders the fleet to draw closer to the ship, and they immediately surround it. After checking it, they found that all of the people that boarded it were dead. Jean knows the danger that the ship can bring, so he orders none of his men to go to the infected ship. Instead, he uses his common sense and immediate critical judgment. That said, he orders his men to sink the ship under the sea. Back at the fishing village, Pharma manages to handle the situation, and the people thank him for his immediate emergency response. It turns out that he has already distributed the medicine that will help people fight the Black Death. When it was time for him to go to the place where people infected with the Black Death were, Pharma tells the village pharmacist that he will handle it alone. However, one of them insists on helping him, so Pharma explains that it's better for him to stay and he goes straight to the isolated hospital. As the news about the Black Death in the royal capital starts spreading, an old woman named Professor Casper asks them if there is something that she can help them with. However, the man ignored her offer because she would be retiring from medical school the following year, and her lab would be closed soon. One of Professor Casper's apprentices says that the way they treated her is extremely improper. However, Professor Casper tells her that it is just okay because her specialty with microorganisms cannot help in creating medicines. Soon after, another lady arrives and informs her that the president summons her. Meanwhile, Pharma enters the hospital, and when he opens the door to the intensive care unit, he sees some guys with weird bird-looking masks managing the situation. One of them quickly tells him that a mere child like him should not enter that place. However, one of them recognizes him and tells them that he is the reincarnation of Panic Theo. It turns out that he is one of the commanders of Solomon, and he informs his two lackeys that he is the one he is telling them. Pharma then asks for their permission to check all the patients. Pharma knows that his experience and knowledge might not be enough but he also knows to himself that he has to do what he can. That said, he ordered the three to administer the oral medicines. Using his magical eyes, Pharma diagnoses their diseases as the Black Death. And just like that, he managed to identify that 12 patients were infected by the Black Death, while the two patients were not. Unfortunately, one of them has already perished. Then, the two patients with severe colds were removed from the intensive care unit. He explains to the man with a cold that he can already go home, but for safety protocols he needs to be quarantined first. After that, Pharma orders the three to look for the people who exist from the village and burn their carriages. When night arrives, Eleanor proceeds with the inspection reports for the cargo ships. One of Eleanor's students tells her that she is doing well. Nonetheless, she tells her that she is still afraid that she might have missed important details because she doesn't have special abilities like Pharma. Meanwhile, Professor Casper meets with the president of the medical school who happens to be Bruno. Bruno informs him about the medicinal substance from a microorganism that he needs to find. After that, he shows her Pharma's report and she figures out that they have that species subcultured in her laboratory. Elsewhere, Pharma has stabilized the epidemic in the fishing village then after giving his final advice to the villagers Pharma leaves. Soon after, he catches up with the Holy Knights and interrogates them about the contents of the missing carriage. Then, they told him that the carriage containing squirrels from Panta Island was heading toward the royal capital. They even revealed that 24 people were heading towards the capital, and five holy knights accompanied them. Upon hearing all of that, Pharma and the priests start growing suspicious about the situation. Pharma even figures out that it could be related to the white death disease that the empress had before. The scumbags then start bugging Pharma to give them the medicine. Although the priests were against it, Pharma still gave them the medicine. He then tells them that as a pharmacist, his role is to provide medicine to those who need it, regardless if they are allies or foes. After that, Pharma tasks the priests to turn them over to the Empire after they recover, which they agree to do. Back in the Empire, Bruno reported to the Empress the incident of some ships illegally entering their country. He further explains that the intruders have successfully landed the Black Death in the fishing village, but he tells the Empress that Pharma has already stabilized the situation. Bruno also mentioned that if his calculations were right, the intruders would arrive at the royal capital the next day. This alerted the Empress, so she ordered to strengthen the inspections on every gate. Then, Bruno looks in the direction of the fishing village worrying about his son. The next day, Charlotte starts distributing the masks to the merchants and to the citizens. On the other hand, one of Pierre's assistants sent him some specimen samples. Then, after checking, Pierre discovers that it matches Pharma's description of the microorganisms that caused the Black Death. That said, he immediately alerted his team to isolate the infected people. However, a sudden explosion occurs, and the intruders have successfully entered the royal capital. 
After that, the intruders released the flying squirrels around the royal capital. Soon enough, Pierre learned about the flying squirrels from his assistants. All of a sudden, he alerted everyone about the rodents that are known to be carriers of the Black Death. That said, he commands the royal guards to ring the bells of the royal capital to alert everyone. In the middle of the meeting of the nobles and aristocrats, a royal court messenger arrives to inform the empress that there are intruders that are causing havoc at the royal capital. She then immediately asks for the number of the intruders, and she is disappointed that the royal guards cannot easily take down five people. Bruno butts in and informs the empress that the involvement of Netherlands should be considered an intentional infection mission, which shocks the empress greatly. The Empress wonders why on earth Netherlands is doing such thing to the Empire, considering they have a long-term good relationship. Bruno then claims that it would take special knowledge to set up that kind of scheme. When the Empress asks him if he has any idea who the Mastermind is, Bruno explains that he knows an exiled pharmacist who had engaged in Netherlands three years ago. He further explains that this person is his colleague, and he is very talented in making medicines. However, he is also involved in several gruesome human life experiments, and is proven to be a man remarkably lacking humanity and morality. Due to his inhuman acts, he was seized down by the Inquisitors and they sealed his divine arts. Before he was expelled, he used to experiment on some epidemic diseases using the prisoners from the war. When the Empress asks the name of the man, Bruno informs her that he is no other than Camus de Sade. As the havoc continues, the royal guards and the intruders continue to exchange blows of magical powers. The intruders easily overpowered the royal guards, and before things could get worse, Salomon arrived and easily seized the five intruders. Soon after, Salomon sealed their divine arts and the havoc stopped. Meanwhile, Charlotte thinks that there might be injured people who need medicine, so she decides to get some from their pharmacy, but Cedric stops her from doing so. Soon after, Pharma finally arrives at the royal capital. He did not waste any time and he used his eyes to see how far the virus had spread. Out of nowhere, he notices some flying stuff in midair, and when he looks closer he figures out that they are flying squirrels. While flying around the area, Pharma saw his father walking and decided to join him. Elsewhere, the royal guards start interrogating the intruders. They learn from them that they only did what they did because they were forced to do it by someone who is possessed by evil spirits. Bruno then arrives and confirms from the intruders that the man they are referring to is indeed Camus. Not long after, they immediately died. Bruno understands their situation, and he asks the royal guards to give them a proper burial. Before long, the bells stop ringing and Charlotte quickly celebrates and decides to return to the Parallel World Pharmacy right away. After burning the bodies of the intruders, Pharma senses an ominous presence and using his magical eye he sees that the entity is standing on the roof of his pharmacy. Bruno quickly realizes that Pharma senses Camus so he follows him. Meanwhile, Charlotte and Cedric return to the pharmacy. However, Camus spotted them and decided to enjoy his time for a while. Cedric smells something off, so he quickly follows Charlotte inside the pharmacy. Unfortunately, Camus's plan for them succeeded and he fatally stabbed them both. Meanwhile, Pharma saw an ominous presence in his laboratory, so he and his father went to check it. Pharma saw Cedric and Charlotte in critical condition, so to buy him some time to heal them, Bruno decided to face Camus alone. However, his attacks are proven ineffective against Camus. On the other hand, Pharma figures out that several toxins have been put inside their bodies, so he has some periodic table of elements guessing game while his father continues fighting Camus. Pharma successfully eliminates the toxins inside their bodies, but his father has completely passed out from Camus's attack. That said, Camus intended to use the chemicals in Pharma's lab to harm them, but Pharma easily eliminates them. For the first time in his new life, Pharma felt a fit of extreme anger and gave Camus a punch in the face that he would never forget. Camus tells him that he is just like him, and he will eventually end up like him. Pharma disagrees with his evil thoughts, and he decides to use all of his power to eliminate the menace's very existence. Pharma's power creates a huge magical pillar that explodes in mid-air. It contains godly purification magic that eliminates the virus in the air. After that, Pharma and the rest of his team did their best to control the viral infection. And just like that, they prevented the most dangerous pandemic in the world. Two months later, the Empress called for a celebration to declare the end of the Black Death pandemic. Then, the Parallel World Pharmacy opens again, making them all happy about it. Suddenly, the old geezer arrived, 
and Pharma immediately thanked him for his support at the port. Soon after, Pierre and Salomon enter the pharmacy too. Meanwhile, Eleanor praises him for his efforts and Charlotte welcomes the customers of the Parallel World Pharmacy. Finally, Pharma finds genuine happiness in his new life, something that he will happily treasure for the rest of his life.